tract passed through the muscles of the right neck, right internal jugular vein, without injuring the right common carotid artery for a total wound tract length of approximately three inches. Hemorrhage and tissue destruction were along the wound tract. The, path, the tract was from front to back, downward and toward the right when viewed in the anatomic position. A stab wound was on the left upper neck at the inferior edge of the mandible, stab wound at number two. The wound tract passed through the edge of the left sternomastoid muscle, left submandibular gland, left internal jugular vein, left common carotid artery, left thyroid cartilage, and left area piglotic folds for an approximate wound tract length of three and a half inches. The track was from left to right, downward, and toward the front when the body is viewed in the anatomical position. Stab wound was on the left posterior neck. Stab wound three. The track passed through the soft tissue of the left posterior and lateral neck for a total wound track length of approximately two and a half inches. The track was from back to front, downward, and toward the left when the body is in the anatomic position. Stab wound was on the posterior neck. Stab wound four. The wound track passed through the soft tissue of the left posterior and lateral neck, exit to the left lateral neck below the left ear for a total wound track length of approximately three and three quarter inches. The wound track was from back to front, <coughs> downward and toward the left when the body is viewed in the anatomic position. Multiple superficial incised wounds were on the left chin, neck, and right breast. The right posterior hands and the right fifth finger had superficial incised wounds that may represent defensive type injuries. In addition to these sharp force injuries, the left cheek was bruised, the left inner lower lip was bruised and lacerated, and the vagina was lacerated. The position of the deceased when she was found nude and with her legs spread apart, combined with the recent vaginal laceration, strongly suggests a sexual assault. Samples for a rape kit and nail clipping were obtained and retained. Based on the autopsy findings and circumstances surrounding the death, the manner is homicide. People's exhibit number one. So admitted. Uh, people's exhibit number two is a lab analysis found on lab number B06-0014. It is an nine-page report conducted by Chris Steary, forensic biologist, forensic biology and trace evidence. Right crime lab. Move for the admission. It relates to Antoya, Antoya White. People exhibit number two. We leave that to the discretion of the court. So admitted for exam purposes only. And I would note for the record that it was completed on or about January 6th, oh, excuse me, January 23rd, 2006. People's exhibit number three, dated April 25th, 2006. It's a CODIS hit from Forensic Laboratory Manager Glenn Hall, Forensic Sciences Division of Detroit Police Department's Crime Lab. That of Anita. And exhibit number four, a laboratory report prepared by the Michigan State of Police, Department of State Police Biometrics Identification Division, prepared by Elizabeth Lyons, forensic scientist with the CODIS section. Date completed October 19, 2015, indicating that there was a DNA database specimen to case associated. Thank you. People are prepared to call the first witness. Before you do, one second. <coughs> you all need to have a seat, gentlemen. I do believe we need to reiterate our media conditions. One more time, Madam Assistant Prosecutor. Just keep coming in. Okay. Um, I would ask that you not name the victim of the sexual assault by name and that 
you not film the witnesses' faces for the homicide? Do you have any problems with that, gentlemen? Do you have any cards? No business cards? Business cards we need. Yeah. And an order. We have a motion and order for the court. Reporter from WJR, our new associate Chris Renwick. Oh, okay, that voice. I, I, I recall. So you got the conditions by uh, Madam Assistant Prosecutor. You know what needs to be done. You all, are you recording though? You all are doing film or you are recording? Just audio, ma'am. Okay, just audio. So you heard what you said. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Sorry have for a great one. You can have a seat. I'm sorry, Madam Assistant Prosecutor. No card. No card. Sorry. No motion. Just uh, no audio. No audio. No over video. No Be video. Fast over before I get over here. We uh, a little late on this. Sorry. Thank you. Just wanted to acknowledge you. All right. I'm assistant prosecutor. Thank you. In. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and the whole truth so help you out? Yes. Please make yourself comfortable in the chair, ma'am. You're in the witness stand now. Pull the microphone to your mouth so that we may hear you clearly. Okay. Please no uh-huhs, uh-uhs. You will answer the questions with yes or no or whatever else you'd like to say because Madam Reporter is transcribing what is said today. Yes. Have we understand an understanding? Yes. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready to proceed, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon. Could you tell us your name, please? Kelly Murray Johnson. Ms. Johnson, how old are you today? 26. 26 years old? Yes. Back on December 30th of 2005, how old were you back then? 16. Were you in school at that time? Yes. And did you have occasion to be in the area of Joy Road and Plainview? Yes. And approximately what time were you in that area on the 30th? About 5. Where were you headed? To the dollar store. Do you remember where the dollar store was located? Evergreen and Joy Road. And do you remember where you were coming from? Home. And did you reside in that area, that neighborhood? Yes. How long did you reside in that neighborhood prior to the state in 2005? Um, for about 10 years. And you indicated that it was around 5 o'clock in the evening? Yes. Was it dark out or was it still light out? It was dark. Do you remember which way you were going to go to the dollar store? Yes. Where were you at? Um, through the alley going towards Plainview from Auburn. Is it fair to say that Auburn is a north-south street as is Plainview? Or Plainwell, excuse me? Plainview. Plainview. Thank Plain you for correcting me. And Joy Road would be a, an east-west road? Yes. And you were, would have been walking through the alley between Auburn and Plain, Plainview? Yes. Did you see anything as you were walking through that alley? Yes. What did you see? I seen a man and a woman walking towards Auburn. 
and I was walking towards Plain View, and a woman standing in front of a man, and he was they was like walking. She was walking right in front of him, and he was walking behind her, and his hand over her mouth, and her eyes was just big. Now you indicated that the woman was standing in front of the man. Is that right? Yes. And you indicated that the man had his mouth somewhere on her body. Is that right? His his hand over her mouth. Could you demonstrate for the court, please, what you saw with that hand that, that, that <coughs> man had over that woman's mouth? Like this. And so, for the record, you've got your fingers across your mouth with your thumb up by your nose. Is that yes. right? Would yes. that indicate the, uh, it was the left hand? Let me ask you this. Mouth? You said that she was walking in front and he was walking behind. Is that right? Yes. Do you recall what hand the man had around the woman's mouth? Whether it was the left hand or the right hand? It will be the left. Could you see the man's right hand? No. How close did you get to this man and this woman as you're walking through the alley? We walked right past each other. Did the woman say anything when you walked by? No. Did you notice anything about her face other than this hand over her mouth? She looked as scared. Her eyes were big. I'm sure. The man, did he say anything as you were passing? No. And this would have been in the alley between Auburn and Plainview? Yes. What happens next? We walk past each other and I immediately looked back and so did he. And what did you see when you looked back? We just looked at each other and I continued to walk. And where did you go to? The dollar store. And did you go into the dollar store? Yes. When you, at some point, did you leave the dollar store? Yes. How long did you spend at the dollar store? No more than 10 minutes. And where did you go when you left the dollar store? Um, I went back home, but I w walked a different route. Why did you walk a different route? I was scared. Scared of what? I didn't know what was going on. It just frightened me to see that in the alley. Did you recognize the man or the woman when you saw them? No. What school did you attend at that time? Northwestern. Go to high school? Yes. And in terms of what you had seen, did you tell anybody about what you had seen? Yes. Who did you tell? My neighbor. Do you remember your neighbor's name? Eleanor. Did you tell anybody else besides Eleanor? Yes, my grandmother. Now, in terms of that alley, you told us that it was dark. Uh, how was it that you were able to make these observations of this man with this hand over this woman's mouth? I was close enough to see that. Uh, could you tell anything about the man in terms of uh, his race? Black, African American. Could you tell anything about his height? Um. For me, just guessing around. Objection, speculation. Before she has answered. Well, she That's said, I'm just guessing, Judge. I, I know I was going to finish my sentence and say, sustain. Thank Arms. you. Do you recall speaking to uh, Sergeant Lanisha Jones from the Homicide Division back on uh, January 1st, 2006? Yes. Do you recall being asked a question to describe the man that you saw? Yes. Do you recall giving the answer of brown skin, 5-7? Objection, Your Honor. I don't know what the prosecutor is trying to do here. This witness did not answer a previous question because you sustained that objection. I don't think she can read into the record what this witness testified, what this witness uh, said in her statement to the police. What do you want to say? I wanted to ask her if she gave that answer to the police back on January 6, 2000, excuse me, January 1st, 2006. I'll allow it. Thank you. Do you recall being asked the question to describe the man that you saw? This witness did not say anything about she did not remember. She hasn't said a word about memory. This prosecutor is trying to refresh her recollection, and this witness has not said she does not rec recall. That actually was not what I was attempting to do, but thank you. Um, the court has made a ruling. May I proceed? Yes. Thank you. 
Do you recall being asked the question, describe the man you saw, and giving the answer, brown skin, 5'7", black jacket, black pants, black skull cap with a brim, mid-20s? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. It's fine. Ms. Jackson, you made two statements when you talked to the police back in 06. Is that correct? Fine. On July 1st, or on January 1st, 2006, you talked to Sergeant Anisha Jones. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall on January 31st, 2006, speaking to an investigator, D. Barge? No. Do you remember signing a document where you talked to investigator, D. Barge? Um, no, not offhand. You don't recall? Can I approach you? Yes, sir. I'm handing you what is is a document that's dated January 31st, 2006. Would you read this document and read it to yourself and let me know when you're done reading it? Yes. And in that document, you identified somebody that you thought looked like the person that you described dragging this girl in the attic, correct? Yes. also made a statement on January 6th of 2006, correct? You no. remember making that statement? No. Yeah, I'm handing you a document that's dated January 1st, excuse me. Okay. I said it again. I apologize. January 1st, 2006. Oh, yes. Do you remember that statement? Yes, I remember okay, that statement. statement. Yes. Now, when was the last time you read the January 1st, 2006 statement? Wait a minute. What's a minute? A um, couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Okay. And you remember what you said in it, correct? Yes. When you made this statement on January 1st, 2006, was it accurate? Yes. And was it truthful? Yes. And you signed the bottom of all four pages, is that correct? Yes. And is that statement truthful today? Yes. You adopted as your statement? Yes. Now, the January 31st, 2006 statement that you just looked at, was that statement accurate? To best my ability, yes. Okay. And was it truthful? Yes. And do you adopt it as your statement? Yes. Now, you told the court that you went to the dollar store after viewing a man with his hand around a young lady's mouth, correct? Yes. And no one said anything to you at that time, correct? No. 
and you didn't say anything to them, correct? No. Was there anybody else in that alley with you when you observed what you said was something dragging your woman? No, just myself. Okay. And were you walking through the alley, passing by these two individuals? Yes. When you got to the dollar store, what's the first thing you did? Um, I was going to the dollar store for my grandmother, so I picked up what she asked me to pick up, but it was on my mind. Okay. Were, did you encounter anybody at the dollar store or person? Um, no, after I left out the dollar store, I seen the neighbor. Okay. When you were at the dollar store, did you make your purchase? Yes. Did you make your purchase to a person? Oh, yes. You did? Yes. At that time, did you have a cell phone? Or? No. Okay. Um, did you say anything to the person that you encountered at the dollar store when you made your purchase? No. Why? I just didn't, I, I didn't think to say anything to her or yeah. him. I don't remember if it was her or him that wound me up. Okay. You were 16 years of age at this time, correct? Yes. At that time? Yes. Correct? And did you think that to see someone dragging a woman in an alley is an unusual event? Yes. First time you saw that in your 16 years, correct? Yes. And you didn't say anything to the dollar store person about what you saw in that alley? No. And you left the dollar store after making your purchases and then you went home? I, t I seen a neighbor and I told the neighbor. Okay. You went to the neighbor's house? <coughs> no, she was walking down Joy Road. Okay. And you told the neighbor what you observed? Yes. Did you ask the neighbor to call 911? No, she told me to call 911. Oh. And you saw this neighbor before you got home? Yes. Now, home, were you staying with your grandmother at the time? Yes. Okay. You weren't staying with your mom or your dad, correct? No. And when you got to your grandmother's house, what did you do? I told my grandmother what I seen. Okay, and don't tell me what she said, but did she say something to you? No. And your grandmother's name is? Mary Johnson. Mary Johnson. And she's still living? Yes. Did you see your grandmother do anything after you told her what you had seen? No. no. Did you do anything after you told her what you had seen with regards to what mm. you saw in there? No. No. You just went home and did what? After I told my grandmother, I could change my normal schedule. And that was what? TV, phone. And do you know what day this was that you saw this incident? A Friday. Friday? Friday evening? Yes, Friday evening. No further questions? Um, no, thank you very much, ma'am, for your testimony. Let me step down. Can you call Officer Eric Berger?
Thank you. Good afternoon. Can you tell us your name, sir? Uh, Officer Eric Carter. And Officer Carter, where are you employed? Detroit Police Department. And how long have you worked for the Detroit Police Department? 15 years. Were you working as a Detroit Police Officer back on January 1st, 2006? Yes. And did you get a police run to the area of 19610 or the rear of 19610 Joy Road, which would be excuse me, 19848 Joy Road? I'll have to look at my Chrisnet report to refresh my memory on that Has actual it location. Yes, it's been some time. Yes, ma'am. May I approach the witness? Yes, you may. Showing you a three page report. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What is it that I handed you? You handed me a Detroit Police Department Chrisnet report. Yes. And does that refresh your memory or have you had an opportunity to look at your police report associated with that police run? Yes. And did you have a police run to go to that location? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall approximately what time of the day you arrived out there on January 1st? Um, if I can refer to my Chrisnet again, um, at 7 o'clock p.m. And can you tell me specifically the rear of, of that Joy Road location? Take that back from you. Let yeah. me know if you need it again. Yeah, I actually need it right now. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. You did have an opportunity to review that, though, before you sat down in that chair today, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, now, in terms of the 19848 Joy Road, did that have an alley behind it? Yes, ma'am, it did. And is that where you actually went, was to the alley behind the address on Joy Road? Yes, ma'am. And what, if anything, did you observe when you arrived at that location? Uh, we, we drove up through the alley and uh, we observed my partner and I, Officer uh, Kim Love. We um, drove up through the alley and to our left we observed a body. When you made observations of that body, did you get out of your patrol car to, to make further investigation? Yes, ma'am. And when you got out, what is it that you observed? And we observed a female uh, laying flat on her back. I'm going to show you what's been marked as people's proposed exhibit numbers <coughs> five, six, and seven. May I approach with this? Yes, you may. Thank you. Showing you first uh, exhibit number seven. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What is that a photograph of? That is the rear. Uh, of the homicide scene from the alley. Okay, so the rear on Joy Road? Yes, ma'am. The alley that you drove, you and your partner drove up in? Yes, ma'am. Now, you indicated that to the left of what would be the scout car uh, is where you observed the body. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. I was driving, so yeah, it was going to be on my left. All right. And uh, when you indicated that you got out of your vehicle and you approached the scene, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's been marked as People's Exhibit Number 6. Do you recognize what People's Exhibit Number 6 is? Yes, ma'am. What is People's Exhibit Number 6? Uh, black female land on the back. Is that the black female that you observed back out on January 1st, 2006 in the rear of that location on Joy Road? Yes, ma'am, it is. And is she in the condition that you initially saw her in? Yes. Um, could you describe for the record what it is that you observed? <coughs> um, black female laying on her back with her pants leg, pants leg um, all the way down, left pants leg still on, down by her ankles. Uh, a lot of blood on her face, uh, blood all around her body. Um, now, did she have anything on top? Yes, a wood, a piece of wood on her chest area. You indicated that there was a, a piece of wood that was placed on her chest or was it laying across her chest? It was laying across her chest. Okay. What about clothing on the top part of her body? Was she, did she have any clothing on the top? She had a jacket, jacket on and a shirt. Were you able to make any identification or any observations of any injuries that she may have had at that point? Um, I saw her, her face was really, 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 really bloody. Um, I saw some injuries to her neck area, um, below the waist, her vaginal area as well. You could see with your own eye that her vaginal area had injuries? Yes, ma'am. I have illuminated with my flashlight. Okay. 
and showing you exhibit number five. Can you tell me what that's a photograph of? Yes, ma'am. It's a photograph of the uh, deceased pants, uh, the left leg with her pants down to her left ankle. And again, does this photograph depict the way that you saw this individual on that evening? Yes, ma'am. I move for the admission of people's <coughs> proposed exhibits five, six, and seven. No objection, board staff. So admitted. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Nothing further at this time. Your witness for cross examination, sir. Is it also part? Yes, sir. back to my report. Yes, it was. Did it appear as though this person has been lying at this location for some period of time? It appears to, yes. And could you give some estimate as to how long you think that person might have been? Well, I Just couldn't give you a... Pure speculation correct. on his part. How is he going to know how long this person's been there for? Well, maybe there's some additional evidence that would give him some clue that somebody might have been laying there alone. can see if he knows. Was there any additional <coughs> evidence that would have given you some indication as to how long this person was laying? No. So how can you make a determination that this individual was laying there for some period of time? Just by the the way she was there just there looking. I've had experience at homicide scenes that people were <coughs> laying out the way she was laying out, be it for an hour or be it for a week. No, sir, I didn't touch the body. So you couldn't determine the rigidity of the body? The lividity, no. Did you both say rigidity? I said rigidity, he said lividity. Oh, rigidity, no. Footprints um, from the leading from the body and all around the scene.